Today we all complain about crazy electricity bills, how difficult it is to get the prepaid meters and even lack of electricity or light as we call it here. We all know that the problem in the sector is great but we are being advised to look for alternatives in our electricity generation. The options are our focus today on the program. Welcome to Earthfile. I am Ayola Kassim. Lighting is responsible for nearly 20% of the world's total electricity consumption and almost 60% of worldwide CO2 emissions. Technologies have advanced so much that technological solutions are available. Scientists with the United Nations say simply shifting to efficient lighting would cut the electricity used for lighting globally by half. If you don't want to um, produce even more greenhouse gas, um, gases from the emissions from the lighting sector, then we have to do something. And efficient lighting is the one way that has to be uh, gone. Some 25 billion liters of kerosene are produced annually to fill the world's kerosene lamps, which cost end users a total of up to $23 billion each year. This has been an even higher price tag if government subsidies are taken into account. A critical part of, of our effort is, is to present the convincing financial arguments to ministries of finance to the people who actually hold the financial levers and say, it really is in the best interest of your country to move away from a dirty, obsolete technology and move toward a cleaner, more efficient technology that brings both light and benefits to the environment and health. We're focusing on West Africa with the support of the German government and Gobla because three quarters of the people living in West Africa do not have access to electricity and they spend up to 20% of their household income on lighting, candles, kerosene, flashlight batteries, and so on. So we have a wonderful opportunity in, in a, a part of the African continent to demonstrate new technologies, to provide convincing economic arguments, to help governments enact the policies that will bring, bring a, what we hope is a, a very rapid shift to a, a better way of providing essential light to everyone. Eliminating the need for flashlights powered by disposable batteries will also greatly reduce hazardous waste disposal in landfill and related environmental damage. Although solar LED systems have a higher initial cost than traditional fuel-based lamps, the payback period can be very short due to the high running costs of fuel-based lighting systems. If Nigeria used modern off-grid lighting solutions According to the United Nations Environment Program Assessment, the country could save over $1.4 billion annually, replacing all of the kerosene, candles and batteries used annually for off-grid lighting would save Nigeria the equivalent of 17.3 million barrels of crude oil. There were something like 19 million households off-grid or underserviced in Nigeria. The calculation here is that if one made a full transition in Nigeria to, uh, to energy efficient off-grid lighting, the country would save, and the consumers presumably, 1.4 billion US dollars a year. That's getting rid of basically 2.3 billion liters of kerosene, 1.3 billion candles, and 314 million batteries not even accounting of what those batteries do when they go in landfills and break up and leak heavy metals out into the, the water supply. The payback period is 14 months. You take over 17 million barrels of crude oil out of the system, save 6.4 million tons of carbon dioxide emissions annually, which is the equivalent to taking 1.6 million mid-sized cars off the road. And the annual savings per household is $66 per year. So, I mean, there's so many compelling economic and social arguments in this that it just is a no-brainer if you can get the landscape right and a good partnership with government. In addition to saving money and reducing greenhouse gas emissions, phasing out kerosene lamps and candles greatly reduces risk from burns fires and respiratory illnesses caused by indoor smoke. 
The United Nations Environment Program assessments show that the payback period in most countries is less than a year, and sometimes just a matter of months, depending on the cost of the LED system and the local price of kerosene. They are the first studies of their kind to analyze the magnitude of financial savings, health benefits, development and carbon emission reductions that a coordinated global transition to modern and sustainable upgrade lighting solutions can deliver. There's a wealth of data that's been produced for the Enlighten Initiative which you can find on the uh, website. You can see numbers, for example, that show that a country such as India could cut its lighting electricity consumption by over 35%, the equivalent to avoiding the construction of 11 large coal-fired power plants, and equal to taking over 10 million cars off the road, and deliver also savings to the economy of $2 billion if they followed an efficient lighting route. And all those numbers for literally uh, dozens upon dozens of countries are on the Enlightened website. But now what we're doing with the initiative, in a sense, is taking it on to the next step, which is the off-grid situation. And there are many people in that predicament of being off the grid. And, you know, we've, there are actually fact sheets here which we can provide you. A country like Kenya, for example, could save close to $900 million a year if it moved from the kerosene and the candles to this kind of off-grid lighting. $900 million a year to the economy and to the consumers, as it were. They'd save the equivalent of over 6 million barrels of crude oil. And they would save 2.3 million tons of carbon emissions or carbon dioxide emissions annually, which is equivalent to taking 576,000 mid-sized cars off the road. So, I mean, what are we waiting for? As Mark says, there are some barriers. We need to overcome those. Uh, but this is a really exciting opportunity for health, as, as Joachim said, education, uh, and also economic rationale in a world that is still depending on old technologies, obsolete technologies, when the new technologies are here to make a real difference to people's lives and livelihoods. Upgrading all lighting globally will achieve annual carbon dioxide reductions of 419 million tons from on-grid lighting systems and more than 19 million tons from off-grid lighting. Taken together, this represents a savings potential of 580 million tons of CO2, which is equivalent to the combined yearly carbon dioxide emissions of Australia, Belgium and Chile. To get a sense of the magnitude of these reductions, achievable efficient lighting savings can be related to the emissions of vehicles. 580 million tons of carbon dioxide per year is equivalent to the annual emissions of more than 140 million mid-sized cars. With regards to off-grid lighting, utilizing kerosene lamps, candles and similar open flame light sources mean that over 1.3 billion people face hazards from this fuel based lighting, including indoor air pollution, poisoning, burns, and house fires. These emissions have not been estimated, nor have the carbon dioxide emissions associated with generators that operate to charge batteries or service households, businesses, when the power is cut. Thus, the estimated benefits of sustainable upgrade lighting represent a minimum of the annual potential. We have some experiences inside the European Union. Um, there is a regulation in the European Union. Some say that we prohibit the old heat bulbs. Um, but this is wrong. It is not prohibited. But what we did is we set a benchmark that lighting system have to follow certain energy efficiency uh, benchmarks. And uh, as the old heat bulbs uh, will, uh, do not uh, meet this uh, benchmark, they have to be phased out. That is the right way. That is, by the way, one instrument how can you can uh, make progress in your respective and the respective countries uh, to switch to modern, efficient uh, lighting systems. Um, we appreciate very much uh, the off-grid um, 
development of lighting systems because it would be an illusion that we could get grids in each and every village uh, in the poor countries of the world. So we have to seek for new off-grid uh, solutions. And again, these can't be the old solutions because looking at the status quo, and uh, Wolfgang mentioned uh, that uh, this is usually based, uh, fossil-based, off-grid fossil-based, meaning petroleum or kerosene, and this is not only a harm to the environment and to the climate, but it's also a harm uh, to the health of the people. Uh, the indoor pollution is significantly relevant uh, for the health of the people. So another reason to find new off-grid solutions. And we have this kind of solutions combining PV with modern, with modern battery technologies and uh, by this uh, providing a new technology approach uh, uh, in uh, off-grid uh, areas. Let me just mention that uh, as we are changing the infrastructure of the world, leading to a green economy, uh, low carbon, uh, resource efficient, we have to be very careful not to make mistakes with introducing new solutions. And uh, one thing I want to mention is that if you introduce new energy systems, look at the uh, energy saving bulbs, we have to uh, establish at the same time appropriate uh, waste management facilities because these bulbs uh, contain mercury and mercury is a harm as well. We just uh, uh, were successful to agree on the uh, Minamata uh, Convention to phase out mercury. So we have to organize a proper process and this is part of the company's uh, responsibility as well. But I know from my uh, colleague Wolfgang that the industry is already one step further. LEDs uh, are on the way to be implemented on the global market also to feasible prices. Uh, so we hope that this uh, will get another push. Uh, and anyway, the net uh, eco balance of uh, new efficient uh, lighting systems is anyway a positive one. The United Nations Environment Programme is launching a new programme in cooperation with the German government to work directly with West African countries to accelerate the transition to sustainable off-grid lighting. On average, 76% of the population in West Africa lacks access to electricity and spends up to 20% of the household budget on kerosene for lighting. Efficient off-grid lighting systems are available in the region and can deliver high performance, affordable and better quality lighting.